Bonjour, bienvenue au French Tech Podcast. Welcome to the French Tech Podcast here at the second day of the big Data World Conference in Singapore. Very happy to welcome Fabien Tertois of Bolloré Logistics. Hi, everyone. If you could quickly introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, so um, I'm uh, head of, of innovation for Bolloré Logistics. Uh, I've been in Singapore for about one year now uh, in this position for about six months. Um, really excited to be here because it's a very good place to uh, be in logistics and in innovation. So uh, obviously mixing the both is, uh, is, uh, is really cool. Um, so could you tell me a little bit about what it is that you do for your clients? Okay, so um, basically we have uh, two major businesses. Uh, we do what we call freight forwarding, which is uh, moving goods from point A to point B, right. wherever in the world point A is, wherever in the world point B is. And uh, we do what we call contract logistics. So contract logistics is managing warehouse with uh, goods inside. So we have inbound processes, uh, so goods that come in, and then we uh, store them, and then we fulfill orders for our customers. So typically for the retail industry and the travel retail industry. Uh, so we, uh, we uh, ship the goods that we have uh, to, to fulfill the orders for, for our customers, basically. So logistics is a very important industry. Yeah. It's not necessarily an industry, at least for me, that comes to mind when I think about data innovation. Uh, you're absolutely right. Um, I mean, the, um, uh, the, the warehouse is, is not the, the, the best place to do uh, data analytics. Uh, it's all about efficiency and productivity. And whenever you need, uh, you need a measurement, you basically lose a little bit of productivity because people have to log in what they did or they have to uh, scan things or right. so. Yeah. Uh, so the, it, it, it's not the first reflex that we have to uh, to have some such measurements, but actually uh, you can't improve what you can't measure. So you still have to do a little bit about it, right? So uh, what we leverage right now is we're, we're getting pretty good at data visualization. Uh, we use uh, software like Tableau, for instance, uh, to, to visualize data, but we really need to uh, accelerate our digital transformation and actually leverage uh, analytics tool. So uh, looking at uh, toolboxes, including uh, AI libraries, you know, ML libraries, uh, Python libraries, things, uh, things like that, to, uh, to, to, to get a little bit, little bit better at a global end-to-end -end process improvement rather than looking at uh, yeah. local optimums. Because you know, the sum of local optimums is not the, <laughs> the optimum of the sum. So um, we, we actually have a, a project to, uh, to uh, start doing this uh, next year. Yeah. Uh, could you give an example of uh, a, a concrete example of a project that you ran for a client here in the region that you think is particularly interesting? Yeah, uh, well, typically in terms of, uh, of uh, data an analytics, uh, we had, um, uh, we had uh, an issue with, uh, with a customer where we actually spent uh, a lot of time every day to prepare a dashboard that uh, we had to present to the customer that is very involved in our operations every, uh, every yeah. morning. And uh, so uh, we, uh, with the, our data team, uh, we uh, we run a, a visualization project using uh, using uh, Tableau. So we replaced uh, all the uh, old processes using uh, copy and paste through Excel, which was a kind of nightmare in terms yeah. of time and time spent and uh, and data quality. So we replaced everything uh, using uh, using Tableau. We automated data extracts and the, all the imports and all the data models inside uh, inside uh, inside Tableau. So that now we. Not only we have a visualization that is uh, a lot prettier and a lot more effective, with much more impact, uh, but we also save a lot of time in consolidating the data. And, and, and now no one is questioning where the data comes from and whether we have this or that. So they're actually looking at the values rather than trying to figure out where the value came from so that right. they can figure out whether this is actually high quality data or, or, or low quality. So now nobody is questioning the process. Everybody is just looking at the numbers. And uh, we have much more efficiencies in uh, preparing the data. And, and then the, 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 the standard meeting we actually do every morning in that particular Right. operation is also much more efficient because everything everybody is considering on what the KPIs actually mean rather than where they came from. Well, as you said, as for logistics, it's still quite yep. early stage in leveraging data, yeah. right? Yeah. Their clients might potentially still question the process, the source, and the quality at this stage before they can move on to the well, for, for this impact. operation, um, fortunately for us, when you look at a warehouse, uh, the operations are very complex by the number of, of products, the different products that we, we handle in the warehouse, but the processes by themselves are pretty simple. Uh, we, you know, we have an inbound, we sort, we store, and then we, right. uh, we fulfill orders. Uh, the, the process by itself is, 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 pretty, uh, is pretty obvious. So 
Right now for this operation, thanks to what we did, we don't have any more of these questions of where the actual data came from. Now our next challenge is to uh, basically connect our different uh, systems because we have uh, transportation management systems for the goods once they are outside the warehouse or before they come to the warehouse that are handled in another system. Uh, but actually the flow is all, is all connected, right? If your warehouse is not prepared for a, a shipment of goods that is coming uh, in the next few hours, then you can have problems. Right, yeah. So right now we will on uh, our skills and uh, so your manpower to, to handle this, but we still have a few surprises sometimes. Uh, so hopefully the next stage will be to actually implement a data lake so that everything is, uh, we have a single source of data for all our analytics and visualization project, uh, wherever the data comes from, from whatever system it comes from. So that will be the next stage that we're working on for next year. So before we wrap up, could you talk a little bit about what you think is the greatest opportunity for you here in the Asian region? So uh, for for the past few years, and it, it's uh, continue uh, according to our projections, uh, we've been basically surfing on the, the expansion of uh, travel retail, uh, which is led mostly by uh, by Chinese tourists oh, uh, traveling across uh, across the region. Uh, travel retail for logistics is a, a very challenging, uh, but also very profitable uh, business because basically in a travel retail shop or so whatever shop you have in a, at an airport you don't have any uh, any any space for storage of goods right so yeah. when you ship goods to to them you basically ship all the uh, the, the same products uh, on a weekly basis even several times a week sometimes and uh, the business model we developed in Singapore is actually to hold a regional inventory for travel retail uh, customers uh, so we basically ship from Singapore, we ship to over 30 destinations in China, we, sh we ship to Japan, we ship to Australia, we across really the, the whole of uh, Aspect region. And what we provide, uh, so we have flexibility in uh, this uh, order fulfillment, but we also do uh, customization of the products, especially if you look at the perfumes and cosmetics industry, which yeah. is pretty big for us and we're really right. kind of very, really good at. Um, all the products that you buy, they all have this import label, and they also have a label with uh, the translation of the ingredients. Yeah. If you buy in China or Japan or Taiwan or Korea, uh, typically. Uh, so this is actually handmade here in, the, in Singapore. Uh, so we, uh, we take the product out of the inventory, we right. customize it according to different orders, and then we ship it. Uh, so in terms of, of business, this is still expanding. In terms of challenge for us, uh, the big challenge is uh, try to improve our efficiency in doing this and right. try to automate this uh, very uh, labor intensive uh, work. To get a sense of the scale of this growth for the, over the last couple of years, how fast uh, what the second What growing? I can say is it's uh, double digits and the first digit isn't one. <laughs> right, so, so that's extremely challenging. Yeah, yeah. Right? That brings massive opportunity and massive challenges. Massive right? challenges, especially that, you know, it's uh, in logistics, you cannot grow if your warehouse footprint doesn't grow right. along with you. And, exactly. uh, you know, Singapore, it's, uh, yeah, it's a challenge. And, and that's much more difficult to scale than the demand. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So w one of the ways to address this is actually not to expand your warehouse, but it's to, to accelerate your flows. I if you're faster at managing your products in right. and out, you can actually uh, ship more uh, without having to expand your warehouse. So and being more efficient, having to stock less. Exactly, and then we're back to the end-to-end uh, -end process optimization that we were talking about earlier. So if we don't have the tools to, uh, to, to do this, then well, we'll, uh, the challenge will be uh, bigger. <laughs> and this, of course, also drives the demand for these kinds of solutions. Exactly. Exactly. For people to optimize that flow and to make sure that they can keep up with this massive growth. Exactly, but we, yeah, so we need uh, we need the tool, we need the infrastructure, and uh, we need uh, the the mindset also to uh, to uh, look into these efficiencies and and, and, and look global instead of uh, local. So, uh, global instead yeah. of local. Mm -hmm. A few challenges on us. Yeah. Very interesting. Thanks. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Sure, pleasure. I hope you're having fun here at the conference. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. I mean, uh, e-commerce for us is also uh, something that is uh, that is uh, that is growing pretty pretty fast. We have more and more of our customers that are not in e-commerce now in, in in the region at least, yeah. and uh, that, are, that are looking at it. So uh, we need to keep connected to uh, keep being connected to to this ecosystem, which is very interesting for us as well. All right, great. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank